Whoa. So, so we don't want that to happen. You don't to want anybody. that to happen, right? So, no, so, so, no, folks. No. So, this leads me, I guess, to my last question. Then, which is, you are an oxalate junkie. Not you, but let's say hypothetical person listening to this. You, hypothetical person listening to this, you are an oxalate junkie, and you're hearing Susan Owens talk all about how you know oxalates work in the body, and you decide, okay, maybe oxalates are my issue. What do you recommend? Because you, what you're saying is you don't just want to cut oxalate cold turkey. What is the best way to go about it? Or maybe like in the easiest way you can explain, because I know it's very nuanced and, you know, complicated and, and I'm sure you're available to work with people if they need it. Um, but what can they do diet wise? What can they do lifestyle wise? And even more important, what can they do supplement wise? Okay. Well, one of the things is we started um, our trying low oxalate group first on Yahoo, and then then we started our Facebook group, and the Facebook group just grew like crazy. And we we have put on trying low oxalates all kinds of resources to tell you how to do this. And one of the things we make very clear is don't try to reduce oxalate by more than five to ten percent a week. Now, you can't do that if you just pick up a list that says these are extra high oxalate and this is high oxalate and this is medium oxalate, et cetera, because you can't make it that nuanced. And that's why we have on our group a spreadsheet group, group which is copyrighted not by us but by another organization that also did a lot of the testing. Okay. And so anyway – we um, have on there how much oxalate is in whatever you eat. Hopefully, we have been complete enough in 15 years to cover whatever you eat. And so what you do is you go through there and figure out how much oxalate you've been eating. And then you do the calculations to say, okay, I need to cut this by 10, 5 to 10% a week. That means it will take you 10 to 20 weeks to get down to a low oxalate diet. And that is what works best in not putting you into that terrible situation like the DTs. That makes sense. Okay. Does that make sense? That does. And then, and, oh, go ahead. Sorry. And uh, I mean, there are some things that help in particular situations. One thing is we know that oxalate, when it is circulating through your blood, is going to, it has two negative charges on it. So it's going to grab up minerals, whatever minerals. I mean, it really, if you go on the internet and type in your favorite mineral and oxalate, you will see a picture come up of what copper oxalate looks like and what magnesium oxalate looks like and what iron oxalate looks like, etc. Because they all have that double charge that ends up engaging the double charge, double negative charge on oxalate. And so it messes up your, your mineral chemistry. And we're not all alike the way our mineral chemistry is messed up. I mean, some of us have issues more with iron and some of us have more issues with copper or whatever. And so what we recommend then is to take minerals. And, and so two of the minerals that have, you know, most effects in the gut are magnesium and calcium. And so often, because this is what they used in the kidney field, we use citric acid like magnesium citrate or um, calcium citrate. And, uh, but we also learned because, you know, we have people with all sorts of disorders. A lot of the people with pain disorders like interstitial cystitis, they cannot take that. The citric acid bothers them. So they need to go for a different kind. Okay. So there's some nuances to it. And we do try to cover that on our group. And there's certainly not a way in this lecture that I can tell you, you know, all the nuances there. But I just encourage people to join one of our groups, either trying low oxalates at a fa that is a Facebook group. There's also an IO group. And there's also a Yahoo group. Yahoo disemboweled itself. They do not allow us to put any files or any resources on their group. All it is is a mailing list. Mm. So um, that might suit some people, but for most people, it's not enough. 
and, and they might want to go to the other groups. But we have the resources to help you. I would, I would personally vouch for the Facebook group. I think of any group I'm on on Facebook, and I'm in a lot of them, uh, your group has the most education in it by far. Um, I mean, I, I don't know how you don't charge for it. <laughs> you can make a lot of money because um, it is that valuable. Please don't start charging for it. I'm, I'm very broke. No, um, well, but <laughs> I mean, I do that because when I entered into this, I realized that the only way we could find out who has an oxalate problem is to just leave the doors open. Yeah. You know, if I put up obstacles and I wanted to be the great guru that made a lot of money, um, then it, it would subterfuge my efforts in trying to find out how broad is this? Because we certainly don't want to go say it affects these people because Susan thinks so. Right. What do I know? I mean, I, I haven't lived in your body. Right. And so what oxalate does to you is something that's individual. It's based on the uniquenesses and your, your, what you inherited from your parents and grandparents. And believe me, you know, it depends on what, what your, what your, you, you get your microbes in the birth canal and you also get them from breast milk. Well, somebody got the wise idea some years ago that, oh, people just need to have soy formula or whatever. Or they also got the idea to give antibiotics to a woman when she's giving birth sometimes. Mm. 